Is Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's new reality TV show set to crash and burn? Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany, and today we're gonna to be talking about this latest trailer that came out for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's reality TV show. This came out from Netflix. It released at about 7 a.m. or so because I was at the airport when it came out, and I thought it was, I watched through it, I was like, oh man, it is, as bad as everybody was saying. However, it also played into a lot of the discussion going on online, specifically surrounding a stock photo that the Netflix team used in the initial trailer, the teaser trailer, that seemed to show this horde of paparazzi and all these photographers surrounding perhaps Harry and Meghan. Well, inevitably, people figured out that no, it had the picture had nothing to do with Harry and Meghan, it was actually about Harry Potter. So it raises some really interesting questions about where this reality TV show is going and how extremely biased it will be towards Harry and Meghan. And I think really it's a greater sign that this thing is going to crash and burn because people are already poking holes in their narrative. And that's what you don't need if you're trying to explain the true story, which is what they've told us numerous, numerous times. The definitive version of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's love story, their lives, they're leaving the royal family. It all comes down to them. And so they're telling us that, yes, we need to believe their narrative. But yet, when they use stock footage, when they use footage of Catherine as if it's Megan, it raises a lot of questions and really begins to have people already questioning whether or not what they're telling is truthful. So I'm gonna go over about six ways. That I already think that this thing is just going to absolutely crash and burn what's left of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's reputation on the international stage and how it really could be the nail in the coffin for their future, not only in Hollywood, but with the royal family and how they may really, really struggle after this. But if you guys haven't been here before, hello, my name is Brittany and on this channel, I provide compelling royal commentary on the latest news and perhaps a bit of gossip too. So if you guys wanna subscribe, that would be awesome. I also cover television shows and movies and share a bit of history too. And if you do love royal fashion and jewelries and tiaras, feel free to go over to Royal Fashion News. That's my fashion news page and that will be linked down below along with my Twitter and Instagram. I would love for you guys to follow me. In addition, around Memorial Day, I will be leading a tour of London and the Cotswolds. So if you would love to come to the UK with me, spend some time around castles and palaces and go to the English countryside, I will put a link to that trip down below in the description as well because I would really love to have you join me because it will be right after the coronation. We'll get to see the coronation regalia. And I think that will be so unbelievably fun. And I can't wait for so many of you to come along. I really hope we have, I believe, one perhaps early bird spot left. So I would love it if you guys would sign up. And just before we go into this main story, I did want to put in a little side note. So I did a video yesterday about the sinking ship that is Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's brand. And we do have some breaking news that it seems like their podcast producer has also left Archwell Productions. And I just feel like generally that's not a great sign for your business. When you're constantly losing people, it ain't a good sign. And there has been no implication yet that Spotify is going to have a season two of Archetypes. If it was a smash hit, I think we would already have that information that it hasn't meant they've kind of put it on the back burner and they're, they're thinking about it, seeing how it plays out long term because it's not just if a podcast like Megan's should have an evergreen quality to it. Are people watching it now or listening to it now? Did they just listen to it when it was released and never again? Those are all metrics that Spotify is determining right now. But I will say that we don't have an automatic approval for season two is not a good look. It just ain't. So guys, back to this latest trailer. And again, Every, Harry and Meghan are the ultimate victims in the world. Forget poverty, forget genocide, forget domestic violence, forget every murder, every other crime in the book. Harry and Meghan could not be king and queen. Ergo, they cannot stand the rest of the monarchy. So number one reason why I think this will crash and burn, and this was one of the first comments Harry made, and frankly, it's stupid. <laughs> he said, there was a hierarchy. So go ahead and take a listen here. There's a hierarchy of the family. All right, guys, I hate to break it to Harry and perhaps the rest of the Sussex squad, but all monarchies are hierarchies. 
This, this should not be a surprise. Every business is a hierarchy. Every government is a hierarchy. Like everybody's lives, there is a hierarchy. So yes, and especially in monarchies, there has always been hierarchies. Ever since there's been monarchies, there's been hierarchies. So if you were the king or going to be the king and you were at the top of the pyramid, hey, your life is, is pretty easy for the most part. But if you are a spare, you do have a bit more of a struggle and you have to figure out where you fit in with this. Now, sometimes spares are elevated. For example, a great example is King Henry VIII who was elevated after his brother Arthur died. And so sometimes, hey, the, the spare gets elevated, but that doesn't really happen anymore. So this idea that he was like, well, there's a hierarchy. And I just wanted to go, yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware you didn't know that. I would think you would know that. I would think that would be super incredibly, extremely obvious to you that there is a hierarchy, a measure by which people stand within the institution. Because of course there is. Now granted, I feel like sometimes if you are especially close to the monarch, if you are especially close to the crown, if you are an incredible asset to the crown, for example, like Princess Anne is, you are, although you are still lower in the hierarchy, your respect elevates you to a certain level and that people give you an extra amount of respect just based on your role and your importance within the family. So we saw this, for example, when Catherine went on an engagement with Princess Anne, Catherine greeted people after Anne, even though Catherine is higher in the line of succession, basically, because Princess Anne is a blood royal. In addition, she has a great amount of respect. I feel like Catherine really did a fantastic job and just as a royal should do by taking a step back and letting Anne go first. Catherine didn't barge through even though she perhaps somewhat had the right to. Now the queen did say before she died that when Catherine initially married into the royal family that blood royals would always have a higher precedence if the spouse of the married in wasn't there. So for example, in private situations, I, I doubt this would ever happen publicly, that Catherine would have to curtsy to Anne, Beatrice, and Eugenie because they are blood princesses. Even though they are lower in the line of succession, Catherine would have to curtsy to them if William is not present because William gives her her position. And just to give you an idea, this, this is across the board. All monarchies revolve around the hierarchy. The higher you are to the crown, the greater authority the ha you have, the greater, to a certain extent, respect you have, influence, all these sorts of things. And so if you are not the heir or the king, the thing you have to do is you have to play both the heir and the king, not play in a bad way. You have to make sure you, you walk this careful line of keeping both of them happy, even though sometimes they want different things. And in medieval courts, this was a very life or death situation to manage to have this relationship. That way the machinations of the court worked. But again, it's all a hierarchy. So him saying that in the trailer basically tells you that he's stupid about his own family and his own life. It's like, do I have to tell you that your own family is a hierarchy? I mean, perish the thought that a royal is not subject to a hierarchy. Now, for example, in the Middle Eastern family, things are slightly different in that the whoever is king at the time or the sultan or emir or whoever can designate their next heir. So this happened in Saudi Arabia. So for example, they basically have cycled through all the initial kings, all his sons. And so now they're going to move on to the next generation because there are a lot of sons, a lot of sons. So every son got his little turn being king. And obviously the latest king, his son is the one, I um, can't remember the acronyms they use for him, but he is the one who's been charged with assassinating that journalist from the Washington Post. They've alleged that this future king of Saudi Arabia had done this. And so for him, he is superseding some of her, perhaps his hundreds of cousins. But again, this is how it works. The higher you are to the throne, the greater influence you have, then the better off you are in these situations. But the British monarchy, again, wasn't the case. So that Harry complained about this and complained as if he had to tell the world, hey, a monarchy is a hierarchy. Did you know that? It's just to be like, well, yeah, bud. Did you know that? <laughs> because maybe you got your way, but eh, at some point the rubber meets the road and that ain't going to happen anymore. And I think it was good for Charles and Diana to treat the boys because as human beings, they both have intrinsic value, 
But when it comes to the throne, William will always take precedence. That's just is how it is. It's an unfortunate thing. The same thing with George. Charlotte and Louis didn't come to those events with George and his great grandmother and his grandfather and his father. They didn't, and I'm sure they were around somewhere perhaps, or maybe they did something at a later date with Her Majesty, but when it came to the public face of the monarchy, it had to be George because he is the heir. And that's again, that's just how this system works. Second thing that was extremely evident in the video is that this whole thing will have an immense, immense bias because the two outside people they interviewed that they showed in this trailer, one was Megan's own lawyer. She was on, I remember the BBC things talking about how you know, there's there's different definitions of bullying was basically her response to the bullying allegations against Megan is that she couldn't say no, they weren't bullied and know that they didn't feel like they were bullied. So she had to walk around it by saying, well, the definition of bullying can mean different things. It's like, well, no, I don't think that's the case. I think it's it's pretty clear what that means and that if that's what those people felt, then they have the right to feel that. So they interviewed her. In addition, the bigger reveal was that they interviewed Christopher Bosey. So he is on Twitter. He is, I bought Sentinel is his thing. And he claims that he is tracking all these Megan hate accounts and that there's just this campaign of hate against Megan Markle. And there's been always a lot of talk that he has basically paid by Megan, that Megan is funding his efforts. The same thing with Amber Heard. He went on the defensive towards Amber Heard as well, even after she lost her trial against Johnny Depp. And so he has been the one pushing, I feel like a particular agenda when it comes to this. And it seems like officially he is perhaps paid or was even initially, he leveraged himself to get Megan's attention to get paid for these efforts. So I can't say definitively, but I think it's pretty clear that his whole campaign and his efforts to get what he considers anti Meghan Markle profiles pulled down is basically because he was paid by Meghan to do it. That's what I think. And that's what's pretty evident because I feel like somebody like him, who I feel like is really, really toxic, you should just ignore. Even if he's fighting for you, best to just ignore this guy. He's not, he's not worth your effort. And so I feel like that's become exceptionally clear through this, this little bit that we saw if you recognized him. Now, some people won't, but I feel like that's incredibly clear. And I feel like we'll see more and more of this throughout it. Everybody they choose to talk will share positive things about them. will share how they were victimized, persecuted, etc., etc. Now, I understand that it is their their reality TV series, they want to pursue their perspective. However, I feel like there's a level of self-realization and self-reflection if you can include people who have a different narrative than you, who have a different thought process than you. Because to me, that shows a level a maturity, I feel like an understanding and that they can really respond in a way that shows a different side. I think we'll only get one side and that's it. Because really at the end of the day, this reality show should have included William, Catherine, Charles, Camilla. We've been told family members will speak. Uh, Doria, of course, would be the one. Perhaps somebody from the British royalty. I think the best guess would be Eugenie, which may end up being a, a nail in her coffin, basically. If in terms of her relationship with the royal family and particularly Charles. Because again, you don't want to tick off the king. Now I hope for my sake that I'm wrong and that perhaps Eugenie didn't have any part in this whatsoever. But again, this is a huge thing. If Eugenie talked and they, they misrepresented what they said or they twisted what she said, she's really on the line for a lot in terms of the royal family. So I feel like it was a huge risk for her to do that if she did. And I think it will be one that really does backfire because I feel like the whole thing, Meghan and Harry's whole thing is just imploding around them. And one of the biggest factors I feel like is how evident it is, is that they're pulling different things to try to prove a narrative that is doesn't exist. So for example, the paparazzi shot, it is a still stock image of the Harry Potter premiere that no royal was at. No royal was there, yet they use that image as if that flock of photographers was there taking a picture of Harry and Meghan. Because Meghan blatantly lied to the cut saying that if she took her children to school she, in the UK, she would be followed by 40 photographers. Of course, that doesn't happen because there are rules in place. There are basically more like gentlemen's agreements and privacy agreements, whereas the royal family can go about most of their daily activities without 
being photographed. And particularly for the Wales's children, if they are, if there are paparazzi shots involved, they will not be published in the UK because again of this relationship and this understanding that these people need to live private lives. Yes, there is a huge amount of interest, but there is a separation between public and private. I feel like the UK press does understand that and does respect that. And that's why they're very careful in what they do. And you know, the whales as children, they're children. And I don't feel like anybody feels like they should be followed and photographed while at school, despite the large interest in their lives. We also saw this and there was a flash picture of Harry and he was coming out of a nightclub. And what they did is they just showed Harry, but he was coming out of the club with Chelsea, his first real long-term girlfriend. And so they cropped her out of this picture, which I feel like they should have included because that was her life too. She was the one hounded by the paparazzi without any support. So it was Kate. And so that they cropped her out, I think again, shows that they're really focused on Megan and they're willing to twist pictures in order to prove their point. And another one that the journalists particularly pointed out is that they showed, I think it's a video of Harry and Megan walking with Archie to meet uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And it seems to be the way they're implying that this was a very invasive thing. And Robert Jobson, who sometimes people think is more team Harry, came out and said, no, that's, that's not what happened at all in this situation. And he said on Twitter, this photograph used by Netflix and Harry and Meghan to suggest intrusion by the press is a complete travesty. It was taken from an accredited pool at the Archbishop Tutu's residence in Cape Town. Only three people were in the accredited position. Harry and Meghan agreed to the position. I was there. So again, it tells you they are taking things out of context to try to prove their narrative because here's the thing they can't. And this goes to my next point is that when it came to paparazzi shots and people specifically video of them aggressively following people, they use Diana and Kate as examples. They couldn't find any of Megan. They could not find any of Megan because if there were pictures or videos like that, I feel like that would have been included. But instead they chose Diana and they chose vi videos of Kate. However, I felt like at least when I watched it, if you slow down, you do see her face, but the videos happened so fast, you could not see her face. So it was like this mindless person that could have been Megan, but no, 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 it was Catherine. And so they're attacking Catherine through this reality TV show and not acknowledging the pain and suffering she went through basically because they're not focusing on her. They're not showing images of her as she's struggling with paparazzi following her and harassing her. They weren't showing any of that. And again, I think that goes to show that their immense bias against Kate, but also that they don't have enough with Megan to really prove their point. They don't have enough to show that yes, they were being superly followed and that they were being harassed and targeted because they have no video of Meghan Markle being surrounded by 20 or 30 paparazzi like they do of Catherine. They don't have that. So what do they have to do? They have to basically try to get the audience to think that the woman being followed, at least in the trailer, is it perhaps Megan when it's really not her at all. And Megan, I'm sorry, she loved the paparazzi. She loved them in my opinion. And so I feel like Again, this whole idea that she didn't have any, she didn't want any part of it, she wasn't that engaged in it, they want privacy. But we all know that's not really what they want. They want control, not privacy, they want control. And the thing is, once you're in the public eye, control is a delusion because you can push as many narratives as you want, but the media will still speculate. They still speculate about Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt. They've been divorced for what, 15 years? They still speculate about what's going on in their relationship. And that speculation will never end probably. And you have Angelina in the mix and all these sorts of things because once you engage and become a part of the public pop culture, Things will be made up about you. Reports will come out about you. Everything will basically come to a head at some point. Okay, the other reason why this, again, will continue to dismantle and disintegrate is that Harry and Meghan refuse to acknowledge or take responsibility for anything they've done. So throughout the rea the trailer for the reality TV show, they're like, we don't know how this happened. So go ahead and take a listen to this. It's really hard to look back on it now and go, what on earth happened? 
And then we also they, we also heard them say, I think it was Megan who said, well, they didn't protect us. So go ahead and take a listen here. I realized they're never gonna protect you. All right, guys, here's the truth. PR companies can only protect you if you protect yourself. And I feel like that's what went wrong for Harry and Meghan is that she was demanding, she was a bully, she was vindictive, she was petty. She was all these sorts of things that we've heard about. And unfortunately, the palace cannot protect you from yourself. It's your own actions. It was their own actions that sunk them. And they refused to acknowledge any of that at all. And I think it was Dan Wooten who said, which I feel like was incredibly true. He said, if only Harry and Meghan knew the number of hours Buckingham Palace staff spent keeping damaging stories about them out of the papers. For months, they succeeded. That only changed when the late queen herself warned Harry about Meghan's treatment of staff and I broke the story in the sun. The idea that there was a royal conspiracy against Meghan is a total fantasy. Only her behavior, which we now know included multiple accusations of bullying by her close staff members prompted the coverage. And again, it's really started with Tiara Gate. That was the, really the first story I felt like broke and the kerfluffle over the bridesmaids. That was Those were two really huge catalysts in terms of changing public perceptions. The Tiara story in particular just basically came out that she was demanding. She wanted this particular Tiara and she didn't get it. And then you had that there was this whole thing with the bridesmaids. We didn't know what the bust up was and there's multiple stories to basically it was a fight over tights upwards towards the worst version of the story I've heard is that there was some pretty targeted bullying towards Princess Charlotte. Though there's a range of stories in between there, but clearly something happened. And Megan going on Oprah later and going, it was actually Kate who made me cry. Nobody believed it because no story in the plethora of versions we have of this have any has anybody ever said that Megan cried. No, it was always that Megan made Kate cry. And so we have this thing where Harry and Meghan, they were their own worst enemies. It was their attitude. It was their behavior. It was the, their demands. It was their treatment of others. That is what sunk them. And that they refused to acknowledge it, I think really goes to show that they will never, ever recover. Because part of recovery, part of amending your public issue image is righting wrongs and recognizing what you did to contribute to the fiasco that you are currently in. And I feel like Harry and Meghan are not there. I don't think Meghan will ever get there because she is the perpetual, the ultimate victim in the world. And I feel like Harry may get there at some point if he comes to realize that, hey, he gave up everything in his life for a lie. And I feel like that will begin to wear on him pretty soon. And I think the biggest thing about all this that we see is that Harry and Meghan don't come out of this looking triumphant. They don't come out of this looking great. They come out of this looking petty, vindictive, spiteful, jealous of Catherine and William and the rest of the royal family. Even though Harry and Meghan voluntarily left, they are still obsessed with the monarchy and obsessed with changing the narrative. And unfortunately, the thing is, once the narrative is set, it's very hard to change. And I don't feel like there's even space to change it because Harry and Meghan constantly are trying to amend it all the time to the point where I don't think anybody even believes what Harry and Meghan are saying anymore. That's why you automatically had people searching through the internet for different pictures to compare to the ones Harry and Meghan chose because they wanted to determine, hey, are these real or are these fake? And a couple of times they did find out that, hey, what Harry and Meghan were trying to push through the, the trailer and the teaser trailer were wrong. And that really, really does damage your brand. In addition, this is just three months after the Queen's death. And the second part of the series releases on the 15th, December 15th, which is the same day as Catherine's Christmas Carol. And I feel like as well, just releasing the trailer while William and Catherine were in the United States was a huge miscalculation on Netflix's part. Because I feel like, again, it made Harry and Meghan look bad. And perhaps that place in Netflix, perhaps Netflix wants out of their deal, but it plays to them. And I feel like a really, really negative way. Cause Netflix is like, Hey, this is awful. And we can, even though there was a lot of press about William and Catherine's tour. So to a certain extent in a business sense, it made sense. However, when it comes to royals and royalty, there is a family aspect involved. And I don't feel like anybody is super into seeing a younger brother tear down his 
brother and his sister-in-law. And I feel like, again, that Catherine's Christmas Carol, everything they're doing is trying to better what they can in their roles. Whereas Harry and Meghan are just there to perpetually play the victim. And I feel like the victim narrative in general in the public is starting to wear really, really thin. And I feel like this will be the precipice of Harry and Meghan's demise because I don't think this reality TV show is going to go over well in the slightest. So, so let me double check right now what the ratio count is for this latest trailer and the other one too. So currently the current ratio for the latest trailer is 13,000 upvotes. So that means 13,000 thumbs up and 102,000 down votes. So tenfold people are downvoting Harry and Megan's reality TV show rather than upvoting it. That's a pretty bad ratio. And I'm sure Netflix is looking at their internal metrics going, okay, this could either be really, really good for us or super bad for us. It could be completely divisive and I'm sure they're sweating and I'm sure Harry and Meghan are sweating a bit too. So and their initial trailer has 22,000 upvotes and 274,000 down votes. So again tenfold of people so only only one in ten people are giving it a thumbs up. The rest are giving it a thumbs down. I feel like again this goes to show that Harry and Meghan not only are they not as popular but I feel like all the timing has really played against them. They really should have waited. And I'm sure Netflix wanted it to come out because they wanted to capitalize on the coronation, on, on the memoir, and all these sorts of things are surrounding Harry and Meghan and the rest of the royals. But again, I felt like the timing of Boston not only played to the disadvantage of Harry and Meghan, but to actually Netflix too. Because again, it just is not a great PR move because they should have just let Catherine and William shine and then release stuff later. The fact that they did it in the middle of it really again completely and utterly works against them. And going down through the comments, they're pretty good and pretty scathing. A lot of people again talk about the one tear left eye, which Megan again as an actress, she's like, I can cry on cue and tell me which eye and I can make it do it. So again, it, it puts this reality TV show on a spectrum of people going, well, how much is true? How much is false? And again, all this plays to the detriment of Harry and Meghan. And I feel like this is what they'll find out throughout this whole process is that nobody believes them. And they actually end up in a worse spot than they did initially. That every time they tell their truth, less and less people like them. And it might be time for them to be quiet for a while, let the world go on and then maybe maybe you can sort of insert yourself back into the public realm but this constant need that they have to amend the narrative to change it to get people to try desperately to believe what they're telling them is why Harry and Meghan continue to crash and burn and how I feel like this whole fiasco will spell the end of Harry and Megan in one form or another. But if you guys don't want to watch this reality TV show mess, don't worry about it. I will watch it and review it so you don't have to. So guys, again, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. Bye.